Sal writes, Jonathan, I'd love to meet you for coffee, but it's not a date. I would treat you to the coffee for all the advice and help you provided. And that has helped me tremendously. Thank you so much, Sal. I appreciate that. All right, deep dive. Remember I said this is personal question. So deep diver writes, Jonathan, what are you looking for in an ideal partner, physically, mentally, emotionally? Is there a preference physically? Well, so great question. So like anyone, we all have our physical preferences. I'm six foot two. I'm probably attracted to women between five, four and five, eight. That just happens to be kind of something I like. I, I'm attracted to a, um, athletic um, uh, physique. I'm attracted to women who are athletic and they're um, they are physically active and exercise on a regular basis. I'm not attracted. To, I'm attracted to blondes, brunettes. I have actually a thing for redheads, uh, more dark auburn hair. I'm, I have a thing for that. I think ever since I fell in love with Stephanie Powers in the TV show Heart to Heart, Stephanie Powers and Heart to Heart. I have a big thing for dark auburn hair, but I'm not. But my ex-wife was a blonde, and um, and I've dated brunettes and such like that. Um, what else? Um, well, shoot, I have it on my bulletin board. Here, I'll read you from my bulletin board. See, I actually have my perfect mate on a bulletin board, so I'll read you from that. Uh, we mutually adire, uh, desire and adore each other. We feel safe and accepted with one another. We feel rooted with one another. We feel fun and spontaneity together. We are both givers and believe in teamwork. We believe in depth. We believe in growth. We believe in intimacy. We believe in flexibility. We believe in love and laughter and communicating with one another. What's most, I think what's most, what I'm most attracted to, I'm, I'm rather sapiosexual. What that means is I'm attracted to an inquisitive mind. This is one of the reasons why I get rather, I use the word bored in the dating realm, but most women today to me seem very boring. They don't ask really deep, intelligent questions. I'm going to read you a meme that I love that illustrates what I'm looking for since you ask. But this meme so feels like, um, here's the meme. Starts off, I hate small talk. I want to talk about atoms, death, alien, sex, magic, intellect, the meaning of life, faraway galaxies, music that make you feel different, memories, the lies you've told, your flaws, your favorite scent, your childhood, what keeps you up at night, your insecurity and fears. I like people with depth who speak with emotion from a twisted mind. I don't want to know what's up. <laughs> so uh, that just gives you an illustration of what I'm looking for in my perfect partner. Thank you all for these questions. I appreciate that. Uh, Carrie says, you just described my perfect partner. Well, thank you. Yes, I can get bored with a lot of people. I like to ask good questions. Sadly, folks, I do recognize that the vast majority of men and women alike are very emotionally unskilled and lack the, the tools and skills to really communicate at a deeper level. And not that I'm sitting here and having intellectual conversations about um, you know, the meaning of life per se, but I like people that go beyond the surface. In fact, it's something I learned in sales. We used to call it drilling down, drilling down. So if you ask someone a question, you ask them, what inspired you want to do that? And then go deeper and say, what's your greatest pleasure from doing that? And then go deeper with each question. I've been told, I heard a dating coach once say, you should never ask questions on a date. And I've got to go, you've got to be fucking kidding me. How do you get to know another human being if you don't ask questions? And what blows me away, ladies, I mean, I've gone on first dates with women who have, I've told them I'm a dating and relationship coach and they refuse to, when I say refuse, they don't ask me any questions about my profession. I have a fun profession. I have a lot of fun with what I do for a living between the YouTube channel, the podcast and all the things I do. You would think someone would be curious about that. I want, I'm incredibly curious when I meet a woman. I'm, I'm curious about how she thinks and what she thinks about what she's into. And I want someone to be that equally curious. But most women are like this on a first date. They're just, you know, they're like this. They're just filing their nails. They're just filing their nails because it's all about them. Actually, Quite frankly, I haven't gone on a first date in I think it's been months and months and months. I mean, I did meet a friend recently, which 
felt like a date, but I haven't gone on a real first date in a long time because most women don't spark my curiosity. I'm now this, listen, maybe I might, I set my bar too high, but I'm not looking for mediocre. I want something spectacular and I want the same for you. I want you all to strive for something spectacular because if it isn't a fuck, yes, it's a hell no. I repeat that. If it isn't a fuck yes, then it's a hell no. I think that's Mark Manson. So anyway, or Alan Cohen calls it a hell yes. To me, if it doesn't feel like a hell yes to meet someone, I'm not interested, but that's just me. And maybe that's why I'm still single, but who knows? I just haven't met my person yet. <laughs> All right.